Hey Sky Fam, it's girl Ariel Rose and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to give y'all something that is actually extremely helpful, okay? This is a question that I've been asked multiple times. All airlines are not created the same, okay? But something I do say is that we all have the same problems with different pain on the plane. It's kind of the truth. Along the span of the industry, we're all very much pretty similar. But when it comes to the nitty gritty of why you want to be at any specific airline, then there's a few more details that you should look into. And if you've never been in the industry at all, these are things you may not have even thought of before. And because of that, I wanna bring them to your attention so you can ponder on them, really give them some deep thought and figure out which airline is the best airline for you. So without ado, let's get into it. First things first, pay. We're talking about the moolah, okay? And not just your starting rate and not just the pay scale, but also how much you can make in a certain pay period and what your top out is as well. Highest number that you can reach. It's different at each airline as well. Some airlines it's 13 years, some it's as high as 16 years. It just depends when your top out will be. If you start off at a regional as I did, the pay rate is lower. I kind of say it's like lower pay and more work. So when I say pay, don't just think about what the starting pay is, um, think about your earning potential. Now, if you've been in a career, if this is a full on pivot for you, then it is likely that when you enter the industry, you will see a pay cut. First year pay on any airline honestly isn't that rate in there for quite some time, um, you definitely do see the advantages and the privileges of what the pay can be. Like you can get paid, you know, 40, 50, 60 dollars an hour as a flight attendant, but that's going to take you some years to achieve. So it's depending on if you want to put in that time as well. Number two is bases. And this is actually very important in my opinion, because where your base holds a lot of weight in so many different factors. So when you're thinking about your base, I hear people say all the time, why don't they just base people where I live? Like, doesn't that make more sense? It's not about you per se, it's about the operation. So when you are placed in a base straight out of training, it's based off of where the company needs you. So I didn't get the base that I wanted straight out of training. I got it two months later, but I didn't get it straight out of training because they put me in a base that they were growing and they needed the bodies there. And that's how the operation's gonna work. You're gonna be based where where the operation needs you and where there is availability. Some bases are very senior. There might be a base in the city that you live in, like me in Atlanta, but it is very senior and so it's going to take years for me to get in. Many airlines where this is the exact same story you're going to hear. So picking the airline you want isn't necessarily about you getting into the base that you want immediately, but is that a possibility for you? Let's say you live in Atlanta, but you're okay being based in Charlotte. Say you live in Dallas, you might have a few options of airlines with Dallas bases. You wanna try out a West Coast base, or you wanna try out an East Coast base because you're in the middle of the country. Being able to see the whole outline of bases and what the seniority is in each base is also very important in aviation everything is based off of seniority everything so go ahead and get that into your head oh, go ahead and put your application and get on in now <laughs> while we're still kind of in a hiring frenzy on the entire industry because the more people that come in under you the more seniority you have so i love all of y'all that are coming to my airline because y'all are just helping my seniority so thanks y'all <laughs> number three something else you might want to keep in mind is if the airline is unioned now i personally like having a union at my regional i say we had a fake union and don't be mad because i think they've done great things but they're not a real union and you're not paying union dues which is kind of nice that so you have someone that you can kind of ask questions for and they kind of fight for you but you don't have to pay for them as far as major airlines go the big three that the u.s knows one of them is not unioned they're basically the only airline that is not unioned as far as flight attendants go and if you are okay with that then go for it pros and cons to having a union and whether you find it more advantageous or not may play into your decision of what airline you'd like to be at. 
Number four is health benefits. And that also goes into maternity leave. The majority of the industry is women. And so maternity leave, although I don't have any plans of being a mother anytime soon, it is something I still care about. I was curious about what the health benefits were like, what the costs kind of were like, what the maternity leave specifically was like, and certain other aspects. You particularly wanna be informed about for your own health or your family's health is something you may wanna put a little more thought into. Not all airlines, I believe, have a free program. My airline does. If you want to take advantage of those things within the system, um, it is something worth taking a deep dive look into. Along with health benefits kind of goes with your 401k match. So all 401ks are not matched the same across the industry. Um, I believe ours is up to either nine point something or 10 flat, 10%, which is actually very high. If you're looking at the longevity of your career, if you really plan on staying at an airline, it being your forever airline, if you're gonna spend 10, 15, 20 plus years at an airline, you want a good 401k match. It may not be your first thought, but it is something that if you are thinking about being somewhere for a long period of time, you want to worry about your retirement too then. Next, I would say flight benefits and companionship. Let me just say this. My regional, if you know who my regional was, if you've been around here, they have the best flight benefits in the industry. Let me be very clear. You can leave that regional and go to mainline and you're never gonna have the benefits that you had there. The reason why is because at that regional, they work under four major airlines, three of which being the big three. You go direct to a mainline and you're not working under all of them as a regional, that means you can't have the same reflective benefits. Now that doesn't mean you can't fly on those other airlines now because you can. I can fly on almost anybody. And frankly, that's good because my airline doesn't do particularly international flying like that we do a little to the caribbean and whatnot but we don't fly like to europe or asia or south america and so i would obviously have to fly on other airlines in order to go to those places now the caveat in that is if you're at the big three your airline probably flies almost everywhere and that kind of is a benefit but if you want to know how many companions you can have what your companions have the ability to like my companion can only fly on us and so if I have a friend that loves to travel internationally with me that's not necessarily very beneficial for me to have them on my benefits because a lot of the places we'd want to go it's not like they can use the benefits anyway so if you're looking at that because you're there for the bennies which is okay then that might be something to look into next is something that is very important to me and that is minimums and maximums almost every airline has minimums and maximums and when i say that i mean that's how many hours you can work a month the absolute minimum amount of hours you can work a month and the maximum some of them do this by month some of them do it by quarter i believe there might be one that even does it by the year. Typical guarantee is 72 hours. Being full-time for a month is 72 hours at most airlines, between 72 and 76, okay? Let's say that the minimum is 40 hours. That basically means that covers your health, um, you still get to maintain your flight benefits, and certain criteria goes along with you actually working at minimum these 40 hours or also having a maximum means that if you want to work 200 hours one month but you've already hit 600 hours in a quarter then you may not be able to work that 200 hours that last month in that quarter because you have already hit your maximum so that also goes into your earning potential so knowing your minimums and maximums if a airline has that is extremely important to me i personally love my airline because we don't have any at all right now and i think we're the only airline that doesn't have any if i'm wrong please correct me in the comment section that is a big reason why i stay at the airline that i'm at because I like the ability to not come to work if I don't have to and still have all of my benefits. Do you get what I'm saying? But if you care about being able to not have to work at all or have to work a very low amount or work just what you require to pay your bills, whatever the matter might be, you will like to know that you even have that ability. The next thing I would look at is how long you might be on reserve. Now this is airline based, but this is also 
base, like where you're based dependent. That makes me stress the point once again, how important your base options are. Like I've known people that have had to change bases because they didn't feel like they were in the right mental space in a base they were at, or the commute was extremely difficult. I had to leave Denver. That commute was too strenuous for me. I have come to terms that I will probably be a commuter my entire career, but if I'm gonna commute, I'm gonna commute an hour and a half rather than three hours, two time zones away. It's learning what you're willing to deal with. But being on reserve is dependent on the base that you're at. Being on reserve means that you are on call for a certain time period. You have to be able to be at that base within a certain time period, typically between two to three hours. How long you're on reserve does play a factor into what base you'd wanna be at. If there was another factor that you put into the thought process of choosing your forever airline, please share it below. I think that there are so many more factors, but these are the ones that I think are at the top of my list. I'm very happy at my airline because it checks off a lot of the things that I would care about. Even notoriety and prestige might fall into why you would want to be at an airline, which is completely understandable. There is a million reasons for why you might want to be at an airline and a million reasons why the person next to you might want to be at a different one and that's okay what's important is finding the perfect one for you and if you hop around it's okay no one's gonna be mad at you but finding your forever airline is important what I will say is I am thankful for my time at my regional because I got to be under the entire big three and while I ended up at none of them <laughs> showed me which one I would want to be at and which ones I definitely wouldn't want to be at if I were to go that route I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about any of the criteria that I said, or you have more questions or any input at all, please make sure to leave a comment below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We have hit the 5,000 threshold, so thank you. We are on the way to 10K, baby. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the Skies fam. Until next time, bye.